In this video, I'm sharing 20 Lightroom tips to help beginners edit better and master the basics faster. And stick around because I'm also giving away a free Lightroom preset pack to help you create stunning effects with ease. The first tip when you're in the Lightroom Developer panel is to drag the histogram. On the histogram, you have different sections. You've got the blacks, the shadows, the exposure, highlights, and whites. Now those correspond to the sliders here on the bottom, but you can actually drag on the histogram to affect those different sliders. Make sure to put the clipping warnings on when you are adjusting your image. Let's just drop the blacks here, for example. You can see there's a clipping warning there on the shadows. Now, if you click on this triangle, it brings up an overlay on your image. You can see in blue everywhere that we've clipped the blacks. Now on the highlight side, if you click this one here on the right hand side, adjust the whites, it goes red. Now that is showing you everywhere that you have lost detail. When you are adjusting the whites and the black slider, another way to show highlight or shadow clipping warning is to hold down Alt and drag the white slider. It gives you a nice visual representation of what details you are losing. And then on the black slider, you can drop that down. You can see everything that's showing while you hold down Alt is detail that is clipped. So on the shadow side, that is everything that is black. A quick way to reset a slider back to zero is simply just to double click it. You don't have to necessarily drag the slider back to zero, that takes a bit of time, but simply just double clicking the slider will take the effect back to zero. At the top of the basic panel, you've got profile. Now this allows Lightroom to interpret your raw data using a specific profile. Adobe Color, Adobe Landscape, you'll see it will become more saturated. I normally use Adobe Standard because it gives me a bit more of a flat profile, but you can also select camera specific profile. So these match the camera that you use. So if you want an even flatter interpretation of your image, choose one of these camera matching ones. I sometimes use this flat color profile if the image is extremely contrasty to start with. If you want to apply an auto adjustment to your image, if you're not sure where to start, you can click this auto button here and Lightroom will add automatic adjustments. If you don't want to do that, you can automatically set your exposure, for example, holding down shift and double clicking the slider. Lightroom will then automatically adjust that slider with the blacks here, hold down shift, double click. These just create automatic adjustments on what Lightroom thinks the image needs. If you want to add contrast, don't always rely on the contrast slider. That affects the contrast of the shadows and the highlights simultaneously. A better way to adjust contrast and a very popular way I start my edits with is to increase or decrease your exposure to go to a slightly maybe more dim image, raise the blacks, to add in some more exposure to that very dark area, and then use the white slider to bring back your contrast. One common mistake I see beginners do is often to only rely on global adjustments. Now, what that means is using the basic panel here to adjust the image. Now, if you can see, I'm increasing the exposure on the foreground, but the sky there in the background is getting too bright. So definitely think about using masks when you edit and don't always rely on these global adjustments. You might need to edit parts of your image very differently. So in this example, I'm increasing the exposure just on that foreground to get a nice evenly exposed image there. And I'm going to use a linear gradient just to cover the sky and the background there, just to bring the exposure more in line to create a bit more of a balanced exposure across the whole image, highlighting the main subjects of the scene. When you're creating effects using a mask, especially the subject or the sky mask, make sure to go in and refine the selection. In this example, I've selected the subject, but it's also selected a bit of the background there. So you need to make sure to go in and refine that selection to make sure you're not applying effects that you want on the subject onto parts of the background in this example. So here I'm just simply taking a brush just to make sure that I'm selecting exactly what I want. Using Lightroom presets can help you achieve effects on your image a lot quicker than doing them manually. And I've created this Lightroom Tools preset pack, which I'm giving away for free. You can sign up for the preset pack in the link in the description, but I'll give you a quick tour of the preset pack here. I'm going to use this brighten top with the dehaze. That's quickly going to apply a brighten to the top of the image. And I can just refine where it's being placed using that mask there. I'm going to add a darkening effect to the bottom. I'm going to use linear darken two, and that's going to darken the bottom. I'm going to add a medium amount of sharpening using that preset. And then I want to add a vignette. I'm going to add a vignette, but I want to exclude the subject. 
So I'm just going to click that one, for example. And you can see that is where the vignette has been applied, excluding the subject. One effect I often like to do, and that is part of this preset pack, is to apply a black fade. Now what that's going to do is going to give quite a filmic look to your image. And what it's done here, it's created a mask. And then on the tone curve, it's just lifted the blacks there. One thing I like to often do in wildlife photography is take away some of the greens because I feel like sometimes the greens are very strong and they distract from the main subject. And in this specific example, I want those greens to be a bit softer and also more brown. So I'm going to go to color mixer, going to go to hue, and I'm going to click and drag on those greens to make them more brown. I might just drop some of these yellows as well. And then I'm going to drop the saturation of the greens there and the browns just to take away some of that color to help the subject stand out a bit better. Down in effects, you've got the vignette tool. That is a very standard way of adding a vignette. I prefer to use a radial gradient because I can control the position of the radial gradient, the shape, and the effects I apply to that vignette. So in this example, I'm going to drop the exposure, but then I could also drop the blacks. I could cool down the white balance. I could add all of these different adjustments to that effect, allowing me to have a much more customizable vignette effect. Use the dehaze slider to create a mist effect. In this example, I'm going to add a linear gradient to the background, and then I'm going to go to my dehaze, I'm going to drop that slider, and really drop it down a lot to create that misty effect. Now, obviously, you don't want to go overboard with this, it can appear unrealistic, but in this example, what it's done is helped me add some atmosphere to the background to separate the main subject here from the animals in the background and the mountain. If you switch the image to a black and white profile by clicking this B and W, adjust the white balance because that will also change how that black and white profile interprets the colors in your image. I like to go to the extremes of this and look for the effect that I want. Before finishing an edit, make sure to check your sharpening detail as Lightroom will default the sliders to an unsatisfactory effect. I like to drop my radius to 0.5, add in a little bit of detail, crank my sharpening up to about 60. Let's just zoom into the subject. And then using the masking tool, holding down Alt, you're able to mask away the sharpening effect from areas you don't want to be sharpened. We don't want to sharpen out of focus areas. We only want to sharpen the detail. If you want to reference a different photo and try achieve a similar result to that image, go to the image that you want, make sure your reference photo you want to use is in the film strip at the bottom here. So I've added all of these images to my quick collection. Hit this R and A button, and that's going to allow you to pull a reference image next to your image that you're busy editing. So now in this example, I want to just match the colors and match the exposure, especially on the blues in the background there. This is part of a portfolio of images and I want them to be quite cohesive so just editing the images on the right I can closely match the effect on the left hand side to make them more cohesive. Once you have finished editing an image I highly encourage you to zoom out to 12% or even 6% to get a nice distant look at the image. This helps highlight areas that are causing problems that you might not have seen when viewing the image up on a full screen like this. If you want to crop an image, simply press R, whether you're in the library or develop panel, and this will bring up the crop tool, allowing you to crop a lot easier. Hit X to rotate the aspect ratio of your crop to try different crops on your image. And I go into greater detail on cropping in Lightroom in this video here, as I share a lot of great techniques for cropping your wildlife photographs.